<laughs> hey there, Tall Man Clan. Welcome back. Today we are with it. Jack Johnson, JJ, uh, we are with the spacecraft, but he's with Volta. Yes. And they're doing something really special. I don't know if you know much about spacecraft. We're also gonna interview Greg uh, with uh, spacecraft. Spacecraft is a 100% customizable RV. And I call it an RV. It's really a semi truck. And, and we've shot some footage and I'm sure I'm showing it to you now. Um, here's the sky's the limits. But one thing they've done interesting this year, which is which great we're talking with Jack, uh, Jack is that there's almost as much solar on this thing as on a house. H how did you come up with being able to do that on such a small, even though it's not small, but a smaller platform? Well, that, a lot of that goes back to spacecraft team engineering around space. But what we what we help them do is not only does it have 10,000 watts of solar, it has 108 kilowatt hours that's 108,000 watt hours of storage how, uh, just how long let, let's say it rains for like a month if you will right there's no sun how long is 108,000 kilowatts last well 108,000 so right here 108,000 yep. watt hours watt, so watt hour, sorry. so if you ran a thousand watt hair dryer you can run it for 108 hours <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy so why would someone want 10,000, you know, watts of solar panels and, and 108,000 watt hours of batteries on a rig? Well, this vehicle is designed for, uh, the goal would be, hey, I wanna live off grid somewhere for at least a month. But at the same time, I wanna be able to charge my electric vehicle. So the, it's been designed around a full EV, a, a, a new uh, uh, Volvo XC um, electric vehicle. So <clears throat> we all know where's the, you know, infrastructure is limited. Where are you gonna charge up your EV? If you wanna go out and experience um, the nature, right? And get away from the campgrounds. You need a car. You need a way to get around and out. But then if you're gonna go electric, where are you gonna get your power? Yeah. Because the infrastructure isn't there. So this unit can allow for off-grid living, electrical EV charging, harvesting solar and living in a very low cost carbon footprint all at the same time. Now this is also where sort of spacecraft and, and them sort of marry very well together because as I mentioned, it's 100% customizable. Um, we, we were here last year looking at the rig. Um, this one is like, I call it a high-end uh, toy hauler because, uh, and, and we'll go around to the back here in just a second and show you, uh, but the charging station is inside. Do you also have an outside docking station? Uh, it can be pulled out with a cord. Pulled out with a but, cord. But um, I guess from, it is a true car hauler. Yeah, is, is what it is. Hauler. Yeah, so it's a true car hauler. Gonna store it, that's I think it's 85 kilowatt hours on that vehicle. They'll be able to plug in, pull that power from the pack. They also, the the pull tow vehicle, yep. will have power generation on it. So when they're driving down the road, we'll be generating the energy you need to even fill it as well. So when the solar's off, you can charge it with the, the tow tractor and then charge your vehicle while you're all transporting. That, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, let's go look at the batteries. Sure, let's go look at the batteries right here. <clears throat> so what you're looking at are four of our largest packs. They're 27 kilowatt hours each. They're made with the latest in EV um, battery technology. Um, the technology is called uh, NMC, nickel manganese cobalt. And, and graphite. So every battery has a different type of metal chemistry in them. And those govern how much energy you can store. So um, the, the higher end EVs need that, you know, get the maximum range, longest runtime, the most energy per weight. That's this type of technology that we're offering here. So think of the all electric car stuff. Now, because of the kind of power an electric vehicle would take to charge, mm -hmm. um, this is where the 10,000 yes. watts come in. You got a really big storage vessel. Yep. <clears throat> and then you need a lot of generation. Correct. To fill up that vessel. It's like a swimming pool. This thing has a swimming pool of energy storage in it. So you need really large pumps to fill the swimming pool. The, the reason why I asked that question for those out there watching, uh, the reality is you wouldn't be able to do something like this in a normal fifth wheel. There's not enough real estate to get everything you would need from panels to batteries. And so this is where Again, spacecraft comes in because, like I said, it's not a normal fifth wheel. It's, it's basically a, a semi truck box. Not that it's a semi truck box, but it's that size. You're not pulling this with a, a Ford, you know, F three fifty dually. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a, this is a big scale version. So let's go to the back and take a look back there. So we we talked about this being a toy hauler. Now, when the ramp is down, you're able to pull the car up in tow mode, and that bed goes basically all the way up to the ceiling. 
But once you get to where you're going, uh, uh, the ramp comes down, the car comes out, and the bed goes down. Uh, sort of like a, a regular toy hauler, yeah. but in, in much grander fashion. Yeah, like 7,000 7, pounds of capacity or 8,000 pounds capacity, some, somewhere in there. In, in the rear for the car. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and that's absolutely amazing. So I, I want to get back to the solar, though. The, the panels, and, and if you look up, we can see the panels hanging off the back. If you look down the side, Lisa, they're hanging off the side, both sides, mind you, as well as the front. How many panels are on this thing? Oh, uh, let's see here. There was 16, 22. Tw 22, 22 panels, panels to generate the 10,000 watts. Yes. That is insane. So the spacecraft team engineered all the mechanisms to tuck them in, bring them in, ready for travel. So where you, get, where you go? Beep! It's all done. Yep. That's Remember. absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let's make me take a look on the uh, the sort of the driver's side. So the batteries again, and this is your freshwater tank. So this unit has 485 gallons of fresh water. 485 gallons. Uh, again, compared to a normal fifth wheel, normal fifth wheels have 100 ish. Yeah. yeah. Four, four times the amount of capacity of fresh water. So, because yes. you talked about being off grid for a month. Um, you need that kind of water. You need a lot of water and you're gonna need a lot of waste water, right? right. So not only has it got 485 of fresh, it's got I think a little over, I think 500 total for gray and, and black. And gray and black, wow. And then it has detachable or portable water on the truck. So the truck will be able to refresh, connect, refresh the fresh water, take away the black water, and the truck can do take off with that. So, versus so 400 and, and some of the gallons here yep. plus on the back of the truck, there's another tank. 150 afresh on the tank, and I think 150 on, around 150 black on the on the truck. Wow! You think they'll let us take this home and try it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but you can ask. <laughs> so this is the other side of the batteries, and this next compartment. And this is your are, power distribution. Are, so what kind of inverters do you have to run to to make all this power work? Because again, it's we're not talking about normal power here. Well, these <clears throat> these are your more home base, larger solar system. So these are five thousand watts each. Five thousand watts. And then they're synced to make two hundred forty volts. So it makes a true two forty split phase, like you would be on a fifty amp short port cord. Really? So basically, you're always plugged into fifty amps, no matter where you're at. That's unbelievable. Even though you're not plugged in. You, you were talking yesterday. They were they were pushing seven thousand watts, trying to stress out the system. We we didn't get to finish that conversation. What was the end result of them pushing all that power? Well, I think they ran it all the way through the night with the heated floors on, the air conditioning running, the fireplace running. What else was running? I think uh, lights, TVs, Starlink. So seven thousand watts continuous, and I think they got it down to about sixty percent last night. Yesterday, something like Running that. literally everything in the coach. <laughs> Continuously overnight. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's fun. So they're like little kids, big smiles on their faces. We're pulling 7,000 watts continuously. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it, it, just, just for reference, for, for those who actually, you know, still have brick and mortar uh, homes, how much power does a typical home pull? An average American home is between 1,500 and 2,000 watts continuous. Average American home. So they were doing almost four times that amount and it only got down 40% on the batteries. Right, but the goal here is um, how do you get that electric vehicle charge? So right. when you come back with that EV for the day, you need to have enough storage to be able to take the energy from the big bank and put it, the energy into the car. And so now they don't have to sacrifice living to be able to power the transportation. And that gives them the, the total energy they need to live the lifestyle they, they want to go and explore with. That's awesome. And, and when we speak with uh, Greg, um, we'll show you guys the inside and we'll talk to him a little bit about the concept and, and why they come up with this. As uh, uh, we mentioned at the beginning, 100% customizable. There's, there's The sky's the limits. So uh, we want to thank you for Pleasure. your time this thank morning you. going Good over your here. amazing system. Thank you. That's, that's great. I'm sure you're just as giddy as they were. Of course. I'm a geek. I right? love technology. So they come in and find out all this power. Yeah, we used, you know, just a little bit of the battery. Just, just, you know, a, little just bit. a little bit. Yeah. Pulling they're they're not even power. warm. I put my hand on it, they, they, they don't they even get warm. Yeah, they don't. The internal resistance on uh, the assist advanced technology is so low, they don't really heat up. All right, thank you so much. It's my man. pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. All right, well, we spent a little bit of time outside with Jack from Volta talking about the solar package that is on this rig, which is just unprecedented. There's never been a rig out there that has this much solar. But now we're with Greg, actually from Spacecraft, who built this amazing rig. 
And uh, though the solar is amazing, and we'll talk maybe just a little bit about uh, more about that, um, I'd like to know a little bit more about spacecraft. Um, um, you know, how long have you been around now? Okay, so spacecraft, uh, last year was our 60th year in business. 60 years. Um, so we've been going since 62. Uh, only full custom towable. Uh, we do travel trailers, fifth wheels, and semi units. Um, we've been doing the semis since the mid 90s. And uh, we do fifth wheels from 35 feet up to 50 feet and semis from 40 foot up to 57, uh, however the customer wants it. We usually tell them uh, within the parameters of regulation, imagination, budget, and physics. <laughs> and budget and physics it's is 100% customizable. Correct. The only thing that, uh, it, it's just your box, that's it. This is all the space you've got. Well, and sometimes not even the box. So like for instance, uh, we changed this one for the stacker lift to get the garage for the, the vehicle and the bedroom in the same uh, room. So uh, we can even change uh, within the context of our normal build. Normal build. I guess I, more what I was leading to is we've talked to so many uh, people here this year mm -hmm. at the uh, uh, Florida the RV Super Show that uh, they're personalizable, but this is, you know, like they're not gonna move walls. There are no walls. It's an empty shell and you yeah. build from scratch. So we usually tell people uh, they can draw it if they wanna, we, they dream it, we build it. So you can draw it out on graph paper, um, take uh, another plan that you like and you can move a room around, move a wall around. I'd like this to be bigger, this to be smaller. Budget, physics, and imagination. Mm -hmm. All right, and so, um, I mentioned the solar, um, but again, we had talked to Jack outside. There's, you know, 10,000 watts of power and 108,000 whatever is a battery. I, what, what, how did this concept come? Was this completely customer driven or is this been something in the back of your brain as well? So most everything we do is customer driven. Uh, customers usually going to have one or two things that are the foundation for their build, the idea that's driving everything. So this idea came from wanting to have an electric vehicle uh, when they're out camping. So let's use Tesla, for example, right, right. Uh, an 80 kilowatt hour battery bank on that. So he wanted to be able to have a battery bank that could charge an electric vehicle, plus still have the electric leftover to live. Go out, play, have fun with the electric vehicle, come back, recharge the electric vehicle because the solar has recharged the batteries. We, we got to spend some time with the owner uh -huh. of this rig. He was here. And what we found amazing, and I don't know why I find it so amazing, but this is his very first RV. He's never had another one. And we asked him, you know, a lot of times people will start a little smaller and then they figure out what they want and they'll, they'll step up a little bit and then maybe end up here. He's like, nope, I want this. You know, and it, obviously it was in his budget and he could do it. Um, but we just found it amazing. His very first rig, he's got this one of a kind specialized mm -hmm. deal that you've made for him due to his imagination and, and with, with a, a stacker lift in the back so he can bring his electric car in the back. He was a very successful entrepreneur and an engineer, so he's got a lot of base knowledge that he can draw upon. Uh, just did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people, watched a lot of videos like yours, and uh, just put everything together and came to us and said, I know what I want, went through, we checked everything off the list and then made it come to life. Now last year when we spoke to you, and, and this is where we get into the whole customizable thing, um, the look of the rig that you had here last year was completely different than this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll play a little footage for you here while I'm talking so that you can see. And it just sort of shows the versatility um, of what the company can do. Again, it doesn't matter whatever finishes you want, whatever colors you want, whatever flooring you want. Um, you know, this particular one has 468 gallons it's, of fresh water. Yeah, so it's like 400 fresh and 400 black gray and, uh, uh, galley and then uh, they also have 120 gallons of both black and fresh on the truck the semi so they can actually take the black away and bring fresh in theoretically this rig could be off-grid forever normally uh, we've got 60 black 60 gray 50 for the galley and 100 for the uh, fresh mm -hmm. um, but obviously those are all customizable these happen to be stainless steel tanks so they'll probably outlive the, the <laughs> rest of the rig and so uh, the structure is it all aluminum is it steel what, what's the cage it's all steel so we start with the chassis uh, basically on our semi uh, we get big i-beams if you go down and look they're at 1235 so 12 inch i-beams 35 pounds per foot and that's the main rail um, and then the head section is a little bit smaller than that but it's still I-beams and that's uh, what also contains the kingpin and ties everything together. And then you've got the commercial uh, drive uh, so you've got 20, 25,000 pound axles, 22.5 tires which is a commercial semi. You can get them serviced 24-7 any truck stop in the U.S. And then uh, the ceiling is molded fiberglass, lifetime warranty. Isn't it like one, one piece? In, I, mean, uh, like two, I mean each section. It, yes, each section. Each section. Obviously you can't because there's a wall here. Yep. But. 
So we can we can go up to 21 feet. So if a room's longer than 21 feet, we have to seam, seam the it. ceiling. Um, and we have some ways to make that uh, a little bit nondescript. So, so what's nice by the molding of it, at least if you can pan up just a little bit, it, it, your duct for your AC is, is part of that molding and part of that one piece Correct. molded structure. And so um, it just, it provides nice, easy, chase yep. for that air and we're not talking about little round i mean they're they're big huge ducks yes yeah. so the the air movement in here is great and when we use uh the mini split system like this one here um the cassette also blows laterally into the room so the the air movement in here is awesome um and i know it's a silly question i already know the answer but um uh, you talked about the, the walls and the outside as well obviously this can be painted any color any color i mean it's just up to the the budget of the customer correct the full custom paint is included in the uh, pricing. So we work with them and our paint company to uh, design a, a look that's going to fit them. All right, so let's, um, since we're sort of, we're in the kitchen living area. In fact, Lisa, why don't you just turn around? And so be, because of, of the gentleman who owns this, um, with, the, with the car in the back, um, you might have slightly smaller living space. And again, this is to their design. Correct. You know, if you want a gigantic living room, you can have a gigantic living room, but they're gonna be out in the bush, mm -hmm. right? And, and though they're gonna have an electric car, you know, they're gonna be out. So they didn't require a gigantic living room, but it's still nice. You got two opposing little sofas here. Mm -hmm. And um, they're sleepers. And they're sleepers. So the intent was to be able to have two people sleeping in here if nice. necessary. Right, uh, absolutely stunning TV, huge fireplace. Um, underneath which also provides heat mm -hmm. even though you have the uh the under the heated tile floor the heated tile floor speaking of heat and speaking of air conditioning i seem to remember um when we had stopped by to first start, actually when we were talking with jack we had already turned the camera off and he was like you know these guys the other night they really wanted to try to you know mess with the system so they turned on the heat they turned on the ac they turned on every electrical appliance they had and you didn't even dent the system. Yeah, we were getting too much solar to record how much solar we could harvest. Um, so once the batteries get to 100%, they kind of shut off the solar and won't take anymore, and then we don't know what we're getting. So we needed to get it below that point so that we could get a full day of solar, um, just over 50,000 watts. 50,000 watts, it, and the number I think he told me, you, you were pulling about 7,000 watts an hour. Yep. And. The batteries didn't get below, I think it was like, you know, 60 or 70%. Yep. And that was like all night. Yep. I mean, it wasn't a couple hours. It was like from six to, to eight, 14 hours. Yep. And it barely put a dent in these batteries. Yep. Yeah, the fun thing with it, I mean, it was designed for the electric vehicle. So if you're not charging an electric vehicle, um, the, the regular residential electric really isn't that big of a deal. Just take a quick look at the kitchen. Right, nice dinette. It's all solid surface, right? Yep, uh, this is all quartz. Yep, and then nice big huge island. I mean, it's a huge island. You've got accent lights underneath, beautiful residential faucet, big, big deep farm sink. Yep. Um, you mentioned the, go, tying the gold in. All of the handles here are gold, all right? Soft clothes, of course. Right? I love how everything is just also lines up. Um, we, we point out uh, th through walking around with the, the different manufacturers, and of course, those are production coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the cabinet doors are a little like this, or they're a little like this. You won't find that in spacecraft. You no. just will not. We're, we're focused on building 10 a year, not 10 a day. So Correct. Um, it's a little bit different paradigm from a quality point of view. And, and okay, so let's say somebody, you know, watches this video or came here to the show and, and they want to purchase one. What's the timeline now? Right, so the next available delivery date is March of 25. March of 25, guys. They are two years, they're 26 months out. So don't wait much longer. We're gonna be 2026 before you can get your rig. Uh, back over here, induction cooking. Um, nice Samsung residential microwave, convection. I, I mean, just, you know, all we've got an oven as well. Uh, you have a dish, did, he, did they want a dishwasher in here? You got one hiding? We'll come over here and I think you'll be happy with it. Over here? What? Full residential dishwasher. This is not a Fisher Pickel uh, drawer no. one. This is what you're gonna see in your home. I didn't even notice it. We've walked through here <laughs> a dozen times since we've been here. Didn't even see it. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Uh, and obviously your Samsung side by side, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. But the, one of the biggest reasons for this design was the was for the car, for the electric car. Mm -hmm. So let's go in the back, which is where the car is gonna live. Now, 
is this set like this for the show or is this bedroom always going to be here? Um, this bedroom's always going to be here. Part of this is uh, the dual use space, so okay. maximizing uh, all of this. So they've got two bedrooms. This is one of them. We'll have a headboard that's going to be over the ramp gate there. Okay. Uh, so it'll uh, attach with magnets and uh, be held up uh, while it's set up, and then you just take it down for transport. These gray columns that you see in here uh -huh. are the hydraulic lift. For oh, nice. The, so they're uh, hidden. Floor. Uh, you take those off and then the whole floor comes up. So the floor over here to the threshold, you can see where it breaks yeah, look at all that. the way back to the ramp, the nightstands, the, the uh, bed, the dresser, uh, everything goes up. Um, and you, I'll show you one of the columns here so you can uh, understand it a little bit better. There you go. Cable so driven. there's the, where's the floor comes up to. Um, we're holding these on with magnets um, also. So with that height, and which is about the height of, of your dresser, does that, that literally leaves enough room for the car to get in? Yeah, it's uh, uh, just over six feet. Oh, wow. So, um, and 15 wow. feet deep on the garage. So any, any vehicle that is under 15 feet uh, long and 16 feet high um, will go into that uh, garage. There's one here. Lisa's here, by the way, but uh, Greg has her microphone, so she's not saying very much, but she's here, everybody. In fact, here, just did. We're gonna say good morning. There you go, okay. <laughs> so yeah, the egress option uh, for the vehicle, so you can get out, but then they're also going to have covered uh, uh, awnings with screens on them nice. on both sides so they can go out and uh, enjoy the outdoors. This is where all the engineering ended, uh, other than up top, because we talked about the solar, but it's 20, 22 panels? Yes. 22 panels, and they're on these cool rigs that extend out, which you press a button, and all of a sudden it's a transformer, and now you got wings. Mm -hmm. But when you're driving down the road, it's all collapsed and you're good to go, so you're not losing your solar panel. So let's let's head towards the front. Yep. Because if I stay back here much longer, I'm gonna want one myself. <laughs> so you've got pantry here, and this is actually a trash compactor. A trash compactor. To maximize your <laughs> trash space when you're boondocking. When you're boondocking. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, right when you come in, Place to hang your jackets and things. The electrical you cabinet your, above. Your, your Starlink. Yeah, right? we have in motion on this one, so they can actually have Wi-Fi going down the road. Wow, nice. And then uh, maybe a place for some shoes right yep. when you come in. Uh, in. In a regular fifth wheel, this would be called your mid bath. I don't think it's really a mid bath in this. Okay. Um, beautiful under counter mount sink. You know, we we're, were talking about lines. Right? Look, look at that. It's nice. It's just perfect. I'm assuming that's also a medicine kit. Yep. Oh, wow, that is thick. Wow. Everything's real. Bob, if you're seeing this, this is the medicine cabinet you want, Bob. Behind here is your washer dryer. All right. Oh, lights come on when you open the door. And these are sort of metal inserts, right? Yep, you so the louvers for the uh, dryer, you need that. Um, they just wanted to have them both look the same, so Absolutely. we went ahead and put the wire mesh in both of them. Yep. But I like the fact that it's flat like this, as opposed to the louvers, because again, it'll be a little, you know, um, uh, I don't want to call it dust, but the, the fluff off your clothes, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, the lint. Um, it's harder to clean it on the slats. This, you just easily wipe off. Um, I'll, I'll let you go in there. Yeah, this is a tall man shower. Holy Moses. <laughs> Part the Red Seas, look at that. Uh, there are no height issues in this shower, guys. If you're tall like me and you got the budget, this is what you want. Holy mackerel. Here's your toilet, which is in a separate room. We got to give that the tall man test, you know. But remember, even if this was tight, it's customizable. You can move the wall wherever you want to move the wall, but, well, get, well, there's no problem here anyway. But I'm just saying, you, you know, you're seven foot tall and you need a big bathroom, they will make you a big bathroom. Uh, and and we, we sort of also glazed over a lot of electronics. You know, everything is touch screen, touch panel. I'm sure there's an app and a pad mm -hmm. and all that stuff you can use. So, you know, when you're driving up to your coach, you can you know, pull out the app on the phone and go beep, 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 and it, it start up and, mm -hmm. you know, everything's functioning when you get there. Um, uh, both beds, and I didn't mention it, these are residential queens. Correct. By there, you could do, a, you could do whatever. Yeah, you, you can do king? whatever. We can do sleep number. Um, basically, we just need the specs. All right, and then behind uh, this bed, I'm um, sort of an entertainment area, and you know, again, on a lift. Remember, they're gonna be out in the bush. That's what this is designed to go, is go you know, off grid somewhere. So they wanna have as, as many views as possible. And so all the TVs go up and down, so you can see out the windows that are behind them. Also custom, a little bit narrower uh, cabinet because of the TV lift. So we did something fun here, and uh, oh, place for shoes. 
So a wow. couple of sh shoe racks yeah. to uh, be able to use those there and not have to uh, have them under just, uh, a... Just so you can release it. Just, I mean, look, just, that's just like that. You've got a gigantic closet with, with your cedar in there. So you still want to look good when you're yeah. hiking. Um, and then, so there's one other kind of fun thing that's hidden for us. Uh, most people don't like making a bed. Okay. It's a pain, right? Yes. Except you, you can probably reach back there. Uh, I probably. So one of the things that we've done is designed a what? top. Stop it. So you Greg, can you're killing me. Pull the bed out to you. Look at uh, that. Make the bed. <laughs> Hidden storage then in the rear. That is absolutely amazing. And so you just, that is awesome. Now I've seen it all. <laughs> right? Um, and not that it matters, but we pointed out everywhere there is power down on the ground mm -hmm. uh, back there and the the space behind the windows is enough place for CPAP. So, yep. you know, if, if the customer needed that. No, um, we can do nightstands there. Yeah. Um, we can make the uh, slide a little bit wider to do traditional nightstands with drawers, um, power, all of that's part of the design process. Again, I hate to use the term glazing over, but we covered it in the beginning. A hundred percent customizable. Whatever length or width of slide within engineering specs, right, right, you can have. This is just what this customer wanted in their rig. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you wanted a king with a wider uh, slide with, with end table or nightstands, you're going to have that. While we were speaking with Jack outside, not only did we meet the owner of this, we met the other owner whose rig is on your brochure. They were here. A anyway, th they were all full of stuff to say, and none of it bad. In fact, uh, uh, they had nothing to do. Um, the husband's a bit of a tinkerer, and uh, he's, he's got nothing to fix. He's got nothing to tinker with. So uh, he's, that, that's their only complaint. There's nothing to fix. She keeps him a little busy trying to do little things here and there to give her what she wants. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he doesn't have to worry about the rig too much. No, again, let's be honest, for those out there who own regular travel trailers and fifth wheels and stuff, stuff happens and there's always a little something to do and we're not perfect but uh we do uh, everything we can to be the highest quality so l let's say something is wrong it just let's be devil's mm -hmm. advocate here and go to the uh, the opposite side of this conversation and there is something wrong what's that process for your company to, to handle the problem first of all communication communication is key just about with anything you do uh, letting us know what the issue is if it's something that we can uh, walk the homeowner through um, and teach them to help themselves uh, that works and then they can deal with that issue uh, like drawers adjusting drawer guides and stuff right. like that um, if it's a little bit more serious if it's something that we can talk through like an RV tech or something like that um, we can take get it to an RV center for repair and then um, either come to us or there's even been instances where we've sent our uh, team members out to them. to them and so because a lot of parts I hate to use the word standard but you know like you talked about uh, like tires you can go to any truck stop anywhere in the country mm -hmm. if you have a tire problem um, but a lot of the rest of the parts and pieces are uh, they're everywhere so you don't necessarily have to drive to your manufacturing facility if there's something wrong correct there's only a few things like the fiberglass that we create no, nobody else makes yeah. that. Uh, so there's there's different things like that. We've had unfortunate instances where customers have backed into a significant tree limb that Ooh. impacts the uh, fiberglass, those kinds of things. Then that's a, you got to bring it to you us. You got to bring it to you. Okay. And but, just for those, where are you located? Uh, Concordia, Missouri, uh, Missouri, just east of Kansas City. All right. So, you know, we're right in the middle of the country. Yep. Right? Uh, a lot of our customers try to stop by once a year. They kind of become family uh, through yeah. the build process and design process. They want to see the team and then they have us do preventative maintenance, uh, make sure that the seals are good, caulking's great. Is that sort of all part of the package too, if they want to come in and do that once a year? Is there additional fee for that? Um, not, not that it matters, but I so, just, so service fees. Um, you know, we have our normal warranty. So if there's anything that uh, we need to take care of, um, that's a company responsibility, mm -hmm. we take care of that. And then um, they're more than happy to pay the team to do it uh, because they know it's going to be done right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, but that's why I asked that because you know we're 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 not at a hundred thousand dollar price point here. Okay, I, I'm sure you've already figured that out. And I wasn't sure. And again, obviously there are warranties. We talked about the roof. It's, mm -hmm. If it's lifetime, something happens to that you're going to bring it to Missouri. They're going to replace it. Okay, that's a bring mm -hmm. it in. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure there's other things that are warranty, like again the refrigerator. But that's a Samsung, right? Right. Or, so we have two year bumper to bumper, and then uh, the Samsung will go past that. The mini split system. I I can't remember where it's at now. They changed it to either ten or twelve years mm -hmm. um, on the warranty. We're a pro installation uh, partner on that, um, and. Uh, 
uh, anything throughout the trailer has its uh, own and we, we do everything we can to help support that. So um, even if it's something that the customer's dealing with, we can uh, communicate with the companies on their behalf. Uh, oh, speaking of budget, roundabout, basic before you get crazy. Good. Again, not this because the solar and the lift, uh, that really probably adds a lot, mm -hmm. but generally speaking. So great question. On our fifth wheels, uh, a good rule of thumb is uh, 6,000 to 7,000 per foot. Okay. So a 40 foot uh, fifth wheel is going to be 240 to 280 is a good starting budget. That's not bad. Obviously you can go way up from that if you're doing electric is uh, one of the more expensive update, upgrades. Um, and then on our semis, it's 7,500 to 8,500 per foot. Per foot. Um, it's skewed a little bit. There's some standard equipment upgrade like the tires, the uh, suspension system, uh, generator standard. Um, so there's some things like that. Um, but people also do more. So we're trying to give an average price of what our customers are really doing. So like a heated towel floor. Uh, in a fifth wheel, typically you're not going to do it. In a semi, they usually do because yeah. they can. So Right. Well, like anything else, even when you build a house, you go to a custom builder. What we, well, we started about 250 a square foot. Mm -hmm. And then whatever your brain is doing up there is gonna raise it, raise that, okay? And so it's a good place to start. So you're, you're about 250, 260-ish for a fifth wheel and about 7,500 to 8,500 per foot for the semi. So, um, and, and just for a quick comparison, um, we uh, shot some video with Lux mm -hmm. and, and their fifth wheels were about $260,000. And so, and they're not fully customizable. They're, you know, uh, what was the phrase again they used? Personalized. Personalized. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna move walls. So you could have, if you're in that price range, spend the same exact money, but have exactly what you want, not close to what you want. Correct. Right, so that's 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 great to know. Thank you so much, appreciate you your time, and we'll see you next year. For all the tall men clan out there, God bless you. If this is the first time finding our videos, you know what to do, right? Subscribe, be part of the Tall Man Clan. For all the Tall Man Clan out there, God bless you and be safe.